we're talking about Trump's four recent executive orders, also known as the Ten Commandments. I've read a fair amount of analysis on this, but they all skip one crucial question. How? Not the judgy, <laughs> seriously, how are you going to do that way, but in the, no, no, how are you going to accomplish this without Congress way? Executive orders have to work under the current laws and with the laws creating an eviction moratorium and supplemented unemployment expiring, as well as no congressional approval for a payroll tax cut or a postponement on student debt, power of the purse, how are White House lawyers going to go about doing any of this tinkering with existing laws to achieve those goals? Well, let's start with payroll tax cuts because it's literally just DACA or deferred action for childhood arrivals except with the IRS instead of immigration. To quote the order, the secretary of the treasury is hereby directed to use his authority to defer the withholding, deposit, and payment of the tax. Yes, deferred action for monetary arrivals. Now it does say later that the Secretary of the Treasury shall explore avenues, including legislation or Congress, to eliminate the obligation to pay the taxes deferred pursuant to the implementation of this memorandum. Still, as of the writing of that executive order, unless Congress acts, you're still going to have to eventually pay that payroll tax. The IRS's action of collecting it has just been deferred. The oddness of the president committing an act that Republicans have consistently declared unconstitutional for almost a decade was not lost on Republicans. Nebraska Republican Senator Ben Sass said President Obama did not have the power to unilaterally rewrite immigration law with DACA, and President Trump does not have the power now to unilaterally rewrite the payroll tax law. So if you like the dreamers, maybe be a little careful complaining about the constitutionality of this move. Alright, what's next on the checklist? Ooh, evictions. How can the president create a moratorium on evictions? Saying what Trump just did is extending the eviction moratorium is like saying me like in that Facebook post just defunded the police. It didn't hurt the cause, but oh boy are you giving them a lot of credit for this. For this next executive order, someone's really going to have to wake up Ben Carson. The main thing this executive order does is ask Ben Carson to shift around existing HUD funds and use them to provide temporary financial assistance to renters and homeowners who, as a result of the financial hardships caused by COVID-19, are struggling to meet their monthly rental or mortgage obligations. It also encourages Health and Human Services and the CDC to consider whether a longer eviction moratorium would prevent the further spread of COVID-19. You know, just really think it over. You can't act on those thoughts, but I bet we're going to end up with a strongly worded report in a few months. The executive order lastly encourages housing and urban development, as well as the Federal Housing Finance Agency, to employ all resources currently available to them to advocate for renters, also known as their jobs. Alright, now to the big boy, the one everyone's talking about. Extending federal supplementary unemployment. How the heck are you going to do that without more money? Well, the CARES Act created the Coronavirus Relief Fund to help states respond to local pandemics and the Department of Defense has a disaster relief fund that the president can dip into during emergencies. $80 billion of Coronavirus Relief Fund dollars remain available and the Department of Homeland Security's Disaster Relief Fund has more than $70 billion in emergency assistance funding available. Let's hit up those two funds to fund unemployment. Now to be a little more specific, yes I can be, he writes in this executive order, I am directing up to $44 billion from the Disaster Relief Fund at the statutorily mandated 75% federal cost share be made available for lost wage assistance to eligible claimants to supplement state expenditures in providing those payments. To cover the other 25%, I'm calling on states to use amounts allocated to them out of the Coronavirus Relief Fund or other state funding to provide temporary enhanced financial support to those whose jobs or wages have been adversely affected by COVID-19. 
Now this announcement does have states pretty angry because they'd be taking money away from their own individual coronavirus responses to fund unemployment. Unfortunately, as mentioned earlier, without congressional action there is a cost sharing requirement on all state funding from this disaster relief account. So I'm filing this one less under dick move and more under being a legal necessity to make these funds available. One other criticism of this plan is that we're entering hurricane season right now, so it's not a great time to start hitting up that disaster relief fund. Lastly, we come to deferring student loan payments. This one's pretty simple too. Just another DACA-esque action that says, "Hey, yo, Betsy DeFoss, defer collecting all student debt payments until December 2020 without charging additional interest." To translate that into legalese, provide such deferments to borrowers as necessary to continue the temporary secession of payments and the waiver of all interest on student loans held by the Department of Education until December 31st, 2020. So that's exactly what Trump just did with his four executive orders. It's not the complete illegal reformative revolution promised by the media, but it's not nothing either. Let's keep that mission accomplished flag furled for a few more months, but Congress keep negotiating a real solution and until then, let's hope this bandaid holds. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.